I'm sure you already saw these headphones before because they are more than 2 years old. These are the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless Mark II. Along with the PCX550 that I've previously reviewed, these are the priciest wireless active noise cancelling headphones offered by Sennheiser. So the big question is, do they still worth buying now in 2018? when the wireless ANC market is flooded with so many choices from the competition and even from Sennheiser. The first thing you noticed when you take them out of the box is the quality. They feel very nice, but I'm really not convinced about the ivory finish. They are made mostly from metal and leather with the exception of the ear cups which are made from plastic. Even so, the construction feels very solid. Speaking of the ear cups, these are the nicest I ever felt. They are covered in a very soft leather and inside they have a good amount of memory foam. Just look at the difference between these and the PCX550. The headband however has absolutely no padding, but we will see later if this matters. The headband is made from steel and it feels very premium. Helped out as well by the fact that there is no ratchet mechanism and you simply adjust it by sliding it. On the left ear cup we only find microphone holes since all the controls are situated on the right ear cup. And by controls I only mean two buttons. One is for power and pairing and the second one is for, well, everything else. From sliding it up and down for volume to a way too much number of pressing combination that can do everything. Remember me doing this with the manual? Well, I actually needed it for the commands. Here's a list of what the button can do. They also have the option to be used with a wire and they come with a lockable 3.5 to 2.5 mm cable. They use a micro USB for charging and this can also be used as an input source when you connect them to your computer. Speaking of charging, it takes around 3 hours to fully charge them and they lack a fast charging function like some of the competition has. The battery life was acceptable, lasting around 16 hours at a volume between 80 and 100% with ANC on. Now let's address the thin headband part. Do they hurt my head? The answer is no. I don't know what magic Sennheiser uses, maybe it's related to the foam in the ear cups and the fact that the ear cups pivot back and forth, but these headphones are very comfortable to wear, even for more than 4 hours at a time. Fair enough, like with most pairs of closed ear cup design, my ear tend to heat up, but this is more manageable than with the PCX550 made also by Sennheiser. Oh, and did I mention that they also have active noise cancelling? To be honest, from what's now on the market, this is the weakest, and it really feels one generation behind the other model from Sennheiser. The good news is that I didn't feel any cabin pressure with these, making them perfect for long listening sessions. I wish I could talk now about the Captune app that Sennheiser offers for them, but honestly, this is where the momentum is showing its age. There's not much you can do with it, like you could do for example with the PCX550. It's more just like a glorified equalizer. And now, let's speak about how they sound. In a word, great. But this is what you should expect from such an expensive piece of kit. They have an what I like to call closed back Sennheiser sound with an accent on the bass but not overpowering the mids and the highs. What pleasantly surprises me is that the sound stays pretty much the same no matter if you use them wirelessly or wired and also with ANC on or off. With the Bose QC35 second generation the sound differs depending on the ANC, with the momentum not so much. But then again the noise cancelling on the Bose is much more aggressive. I would recommend this for a lot of music genres, maybe not that much for classical music. There is a separation between the instruments but they suffer from, uh, how should I put it, lack of sound stage? But hey this is why Sennheiser makes open back headphones as well. Anyway, remember that dual multifunction button? It can be used for calls as well since like most of the wireless headphones, these are actually a headset. Call quality is okay, they cannot reach the level of the PCX550. So to answer the question I asked at the beginning of the video, are they still worth it? Yes, I would recommend them since in the two months since I bought them, the price dipped below $320. Lower than the Bose, lower than the Bowers and Wilkins, lower even than the Sennheisers 
own PCX550. At this price, getting them is a no-brainer. But what would you do? Which premium wireless ANC headphones would you get? Leave your comment below and if you like this video, why not subscribe for more. See you next time!